رمضانيا خير الشهور يا فضل رحمن غفور السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In today's dars I intend to present before you the life of Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu wassalam But the story of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam would be incomplete without first having dealt with how uh, Allah Taala answers the question of the creation of human beings in general So in this story I will be shedding some light on how the first uh, human beings were created by Allah Almighty in the light of what the Holy Quran says and then inshallah taala we'll discuss different aspects from the life of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam including the a you know the the old age question that you know was hazrat adam alayhi salam the first human being and how did allah taala speak with him what language did adam alayhi salam speak where did he live how was he created and how was hazrat hawa um his wife created was she literally created from his ribs and where did they live and what happened where was this jannah that they used to live in why were they expelled from it and where did they go and what did they do who did their kids marry all these questions inshallah taala are going to be answered uh, in today's dars so let me start off by mentioning how the early human beings were created allah taala tells us in the holy quran in surah al baqara and then in different places that allah taala wanted to create um a certain type of creation which would be representing him and would be khalifa to allah almighty so allah taala said inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa that i am going to create someone who will be my vicegerent my successor or my khalifa in the land Now the word khalifa tells us that uh, you know it is preceded by somebody else. Khalifa literally means one who comes later on. And you know the generic terms the word khalifa is referred to the successor of a prophet because the khalifa comes after the prophet. Right? So in the same sense Allah is saying that Adam is going to be created or humans are going to be created. but they are going to be preceded by some other form of creation keep this in mind so the unicellular organism that was destined to become a human being one day it did not become something else on its journey evolutionary journey to become a fully human it did not become a monkey in between it did not become something else in between from that unicellular organism straight to a human being it took millions maybe billions of years for that evolutionary process to take place but it did not go through what darwinian theory wants us to believe that you know humans before us were basically apes and then before that it was something else hazrat taqdis masih maud alayhi salatu wassalam in his tafsir in one place says that the darwinian theory of evolution is wrong because if it was true then there is nothing that should be stopping it we see evolution taking still taking place in other species even charles darwin has spoken on this has written on this in his uh, literature but why is it that the evolution of human beings has come to stop 
Hazur has used this point and that Hazrat Muslim mouth built upon this. And Hazrat Muslim mouth then stated that this unicellular organism drew its nourishment from the ground the way plants draw their nourishment from the ground. When Allah Ta'ala says that Allah Ta'ala created us from mati, from, from dust or clay, and in different place it says ringing clay, in another place Allah Ta'ala says the building block for life is water. Water is absolute necessary. So when you put all these things together, you get the picture of something similar to how a seed is sown in a ground and then eventually it sprouts and becomes a plant and then that plant grows and becomes a tree and becomes fruitful. So when you study the Holy Quran, you see that Allah Ta'ala is painting a similar picture <clears throat> as far as the creation of human beings is concerned. It's not that human beings sprung you know, out of nowhere. And it's not that, you know, the way Bible uh, suggests. And many Muslim scholars hold the same belief because of the Bible, which is that Allah Ta'ala, uh, you know, made a mannequin, made a human figure out of clay and then breathed into it. And lo and behold, it started to, you know, live. It started to walk around and see and speak and all those things. That's not how Quran explains it. Quran says that the way Allah Ta'ala created Hazrat Adam or the first human being was in a very gradual process. Allah Ta'ala says, Khalaqakum atwaran. We created you in stages. And then in another place, probably in Surah al nuh Allah Ta'ala says, Wa ambatakum min al ardi nabata. And we grew you out of earth the way plants and vegetation is grown out of land. So this is the picture that Allah Almighty is painting in the Holy Quran. So now we know how the initial human being was created. And Allah Ta'ala doesn't tell us if it was only one human being that was created or many. But if it was single human being, how did that single human being then, you know, become two and then four and then so on and so forth. How did the first human being multiply? You multiply one by one, it's nothing. It's literally one. It doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't move the needle. So the concept, now we have a few plausible explanations here. One is that maybe perhaps the first human being that was created might have been a hermaphrodite, someone who was born with both uh, capabilities the male cap capability as well as the female capability. In which case, this individual did not require uh, a female, or if this was a female, then it did not require a male to reproduce on its own. So asexual reproduction took place. This is one explanation. The other explanation could be that Allah Ta'ala made such human beings, not one, but multiple. And then when Allah Ta'ala grew them out when they became full human beings then through their mating their species further grew which is now the mode of uh, you know the mode through which our species is growing now <clears throat> that said I'm going to read this essay that I have before me which covers the entirety of Hazrat Adam Wasalam's life Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, the first prophet of Allah Almighty. His story begins with the creation of the universe itself. Do you know how Allah Ta'ala brought this universe into existence? Allah the Almighty tells us in the Holy Quran that in the beginning, there was a big bang which was the beginning of all of creation. With time, that mass started to expand and various galaxies started to form. Among one such galaxy, there was a tiny planet which was now called Earth. On it, after billions of years, life began. Allah the Almighty created the entire universe and everything in it in various stages, taking millions of years, if not more. <coughs> When Allah the Almighty had created everything and the world, 
had been in existence for billions of years towards the end of all creation. Meaning, after having created all these different species and different forms of life, Allah created human beings. These early human beings were very similar to plants in the beginning. They did not move, talk, or eat. Rather, they received their food from the earth in the same way that plants do. Then, through evolutionary processes, they progressed over time. They became lifelike and started to walk like animals. At this stage, they could move, eat, drink and sleep. But even now, they could not speak or think like we do. So, Allah the Almighty progressed them further and now they started to think and speak with one another. Soon they realized that there are dangerous and ferocious animals all around them that can hurt them anytime. So, in order to protect their, themselves and their life, in order to protect themselves from being eaten up, they started to live in caves. When they were in caves, they were protected against bad weather as well as the attacks from dangerous animals like lions, wolves, and even snakes. Allah the Almighty has told us in the Holy Quran that these people, these early human beings, were called Jan. Allah Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَخَلَقَ الْجَانَّ مِن مَارِجِ مِن نَارِ That there was this form of creation that Allah Ta'ala had created and they were called Jan. So this earliest form of human beings who used to live in caves, Allah the Almighty in the Holy Quran has called them Jan. These, the reason they have been called Jan is because the word Jan comes from the Arabic root of Jim Nun Nun. Janna or Jin. Jin literally means something that stays hidden. Something that stays hidden, something with a fiery nature, someone that can easily get irritated and is ready to pick a fight. This was the nature of these early human beings. And because they used to live in caves, hence the word John. These were the earliest cavemen we know of. Humans were not as developed yet because they did not know they did not know how to cook or build homes and they did not have any clothes to cover themselves with. Time went by and slowly but surely these earliest human beings evolved yet again and were now ready to live, in, uh, in, live together by forming small communities, villages in valleys and open grounds away from the caves. They were also now physically and mentally ready to speak with Allah Almighty. From among such people, there was a man who was chosen by Allah the Almighty to lead the rest of the group. People called him Adam And this is his story. We do not know who the parents of Hazrat Adam were. But we do know that Hazrat Adam was born as a twin on a Friday, just before sunset. Allah the Almighty has not told us about Hazrat Adam Islam's childhood, other than the fact that he lived in a cave like all the other people of his time, that he belonged to an area which is now part of present-day Iraq, which was part of the land of ancient Mesopotamia. With the passage of time, Hazrat Adam Islam grew stronger and became an intelligent man. Shortly thereafter, Allah Almighty provided him with a life partner who became his wife. Her name was Hava alayhi salam. And she also used to live in a cave just like Hazrat Adam salam. One day, out of nowhere, Hazrat Adam salam heard a voice Call out to him. Ya Adam. O oh Adam. Can you imagine how he must have felt hearing a voice out of nowhere? He must have been scared. 
but the voice calmed him as it was the voice of Allah Almighty. This was the beginning of revelation on Adam a.s. Allah the Almighty spoke with Adam a.s. and started teaching him the Arabic language himself. So the language taught to Hazrat Adam a.s. was the language of Arabic. Once Hazrat Adam learned Arabic, Allah the Almighty appointed him as the first prophet of God. When Allah the Almighty had made Hazrat Adam his prophet, he commanded the angels and the rest of his creation to perform sajda, which meant that they must obey Hazrat Adam salam and help him in establishing the very first community of believers in Allah the Almighty on this earth. But there was one person who was a human being called Iblis who became jealous of Hazrat Adam salam and refused to obey him. Iblis said to Allah the Almighty, How can I, who is created from fire, obey Adam, who is created from dust? What Iblis meant was that he had an angry personality and could not accept the authority of someone like Adam salam, who was a humble man. Iblis continued, O oh Allah, I cannot obey Adam because I am better than him. At this answer from Iblis, Allah the Almighty said to him, O oh Iblis, now that you have disobeyed me, you have lost all honor. Iblis then became hopeless <clears throat> and said that he will try to destroy Hazrat Adam salam, and his followers from following Allah the Almighty. This way, Iblis announced that he was an enemy of Allah the Almighty and his Prophet Hazrat Adam a.s. Allah the Almighty then called out to Hazrat Adam and said to him, O oh Adam, from this day onwards, you and your wife and those who believe in you should go and live in a place which I have prepared for you. Allah the Almighty then continued and stated, you will all stay together like a community or one big family and it will be like a little paradise on earth. Allah the Almighty told Hazrat Adam salam, that he and his followers were to help one another with food and water so that no one goes to sleep hungry or remains thirsty. In those days, hunting was not a part of human life and so people could not benefit from animal skins. So in order to cover themselves, Allah the Almighty told Hazrat Adam salam, that he and his followers should make clothes out of straw and leaves. And this way, no one will remain naked and they would have modesty and respect for one another. You see, wearing clothes and covering your body has been a sign of modesty as well as respect for one another for thousands of years. This is why in our religion we are taught to wear modest clothes that do not reveal our body to others. Allah the Almighty also told Hazrat Adam salam, to make small huts made up of straw mats for hundreds of people. This shows us that there must have been hundreds of people who had believed in Hazrat Adam <coughs> So Allah Ta'ala told Hazrat Adam to make small huts made up of straw mats for hundreds of people where each person could live with his own family. These huts were to be built close to one another with a fence around their homes so that no wild animal could come to attack them. Allah the Almighty also gave the law to Hazrat Adam salam, that when people would commit any crimes, they would be punished accordingly. This way, everyone was going to be held responsible for their actions. You must be wondering what these people were going to eat in order to survive. In this garden where they came and started to live, which was called Paradise on Earth, there were fruits of all different kinds. Allah the Almighty revealed to Hazrat Adam 
which plants to avoid as they were poisonous and which plants to eat as a source of food or nourishment. With all of this knowledge, Allah Almighty also warned Hazrat Adam Islam against the attacks of Iblis and his family, saying, do not approach this tree, for if you do, you would become of the wrongdoers. This forbidden tree was not a physical tree. Rather, it meant a specific family of people that were known as the firebrand. Firebrand is someone who is always ready to pick a fight with others and does not like peace. You see, even now we use the phrase family tree. So Allah the Almighty told Hazrat Adam Islam not to befriend Iblis or his family members, nor let any of them enter this garden where Hazrat Adam Islam was to live with his wife and other believers. Allah Almighty told Hazrat Adam Islam that Iblis would try to kill you and your friends by deceiving you. With this message, Allah the Almighty sent Hazrat Adam back to his people. This was the initial communication from Allah Almighty given to Hazrat Adam Islam. After listening to the voice of Allah and receiving so much guidance, Hazrat Adam came back to his people and said to them that Allah who created everything has spoken to me and has chosen me as his prophet. He has taught me many things and has given me a message to share with all of you. Can you imagine how those people would have reacted when Hazrat Adam said that there is one God, the creator of everything, and that, that God spoke to Adam al -Islam. These people had not heard of God before. So when they heard Hazrat Adam speak of him, they must have been shocked. Allah the Almighty tells us in the Holy Quran that some people believed in him because they knew Hazrat Adam does not lie while others rejected the message that he had brought. You must remember, these people used to live in caves out of fear of being eaten up by animals. And here is Hazrat Adam telling them to leave these caves and to go with him and live under the blue skies. This would have greatly scared many of these people. So you know what they did? They started to oppose Hazrat Adam a.s. They thought that if they can kill Hazrat Adam, then nobody will leave this place, nor will anyone listen to him. They considered this to be a fitna. But then Hazrat Adam, his wife, Hazrat Hawa, and their friends, the people, the believers who believed in Hazrat Adam Islam, left the caves and began to live on the land where there were rivers and lush green gardens with plenty of fruit trees. This beautiful place was called Jannah, which means a garden with lots of trees, fruits, rivers, and streams of fresh water. Just like any successful community, they too must have divided various chores among themselves. Some of these chores included drawing water from the nearby rivers and bringing fruits from various trees to eat from. They would make clothes for themselves out of the same material that they made the straw mats from. This way, everyone started to cover themselves up properly because they would work in the sunlight during the day their skin color started to become affected by it. So other people who did not join them started calling them Admi, which meant one with a brownish complexion or one belonging to Adam. But the ones who stayed behind in caves in opposition to Hazrat Adam and his followers, they preferred to live in hiding and were thus called Jinn which means who stays hidden, one who stays hidden. Soon this small community of believers started to grow as people started to live happily with one another in peace. Hazrat Adam and his followers felt that they were in paradise on earth. When there is peace, love and harmony in our home, we say that our home is paradise. In that same way, the earliest community established by Hazrat Adam 
also experienced peace, love, and harmony. And therefore, they also referred to their place of abode as paradise. But you know, there is another paradise where one goes after death. However, the paradise where Adam salam, and his people lived was a beautiful place right here on earth. When everyone had settled, all of a sudden, things took a wrong turn. Remember Iblis? The one who had made a promise to attack Hazrat Adam and his followers? Well, he tried to attack Hazrat Adam. In the beginning, Hazrat Adam and his followers did not let their guard down at all. They would not let Iblis or his family members come near their village. But then Iblis found a way around it. You see, Hazrat Adam salam, knew that he must not let Iblis and his family members enter the Jannah. So what Iblis did is that he instead sent one of his followers to trick Hazrat Adam, who made peace with him. Hazrat Adam mistook him as a sincere person and allowed him to become his follower and enter this Jannah. This way, the follower of Iblis was able to enter, enter the place where Hazrat Adam and his followers were living together. And therefore, this person act as the agent of Iblis. Allah the Almighty has called this follower of Iblis Shaitan. Shaitan is someone who is away from Allah Almighty and his guidance. Someone who is evil and wants to harm others by keeping them away from accepting guidance in order to live peacefully. You see, Shaitan is of two types. There is a Shaitan which we cannot see. Just the same way that there is a positive entity called the angels that we typically usually do not see with our eyes. The negative force that exists in the universe is called the shaitan. But shaitan is also used for evil people. Going back to the story, Hazrat Adam salam and his followers allowed this person, shaitan, to enter their jannah as they thought that now he is one of them. But as soon as, soon as shaitan entered, he started to divide the people and destroyed the peace of that paradise. He started to divide people amongst each other. Ultimately, Allah the Almighty had to say to everyone, go forth from here. Some of you are enemies of others and for you there is a home in the earth. Allah the Almighty told Hazrat Adam and his followers and similarly to their enemies to leave this garden to leave this Jannah and to now go live somewhere else. Allah the Almighty told them that this opposition would not end here and that evil people will always try to disrupt the peace of the land. After hearing this, Hazrat Adam became extremely sad for what had transpired. He prayed to Allah the Almighty and asked for forgiveness from him. Upon this request of his Allah Almighty taught Hazrat Adam والسلام, and his followers a very specific prayer, which he then answered and forgave them. Would you like to know which prayer it was? It was, Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and you, if you forgive us not and have not mercy on us, we shall surely be of the lost. When Hazrat Adam salam, his wife, Hazrat Hawa, and his followers had truly repented by reciting this prayer. Allah Almighty turned towards them with mercy and answered their prayers by forgiving them their mistake. Some people think that Hazrat Adam committed a sin by intentionally disobeying Allah Almighty. But Allah Almighty himself says in the Holy Quran that Hazrat Adam did not commit any sin. It was a mistake that he made unintentionally by not fully understanding that this person who was acting as the agent of Iblis was not a sincere person. You see, Allah Almighty forgives every mistake as long as we sincerely ask for forgiveness. After Allah Almighty had accepted the repentance of Hazrat Adam salam and all those that were with him, Allah Almighty told them to move away from that area. But before they left, Allah Almighty told everyone 
that from time to time, Allah's messengers would come to them with guidance. So whosoever will accept the message of Allah, the Almighty's messengers, they would not have to be afraid and would live in peace and harmony. Allah made this promise that this will continue for as long as the children of Adam shall live on earth. For as long as we exist, Allah's prophets will continue to come from time to time. Thereafter, Hazrat Adam salam, and all those who were with him left that area, the area of Iraq, and migrated to a distant land called India. So Hazrat Adam, along with the earliest community of believers, migrated to India. How do we know that they migrated to India? Because this is something which is mentioned in the Athar, which is, you know, some of the statements of Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala no, speak of this. You must be wondering why India? What was so special about it that Allah Almighty chose India as the place for Hazrat Adam and his followers to move to? The reason Hazrat Adam moved to India is because 6,000 years later, another prophet of Allah the Almighty was going to be raised in that land of India to fulfill a long-awaited prophecy. I will tell you more about this at the end of this story. After Hazrat Adam had moved to India, Allah Almighty also commanded him to build a house in the land of Arabia, which would serve as the first structure built for the worship of Allah the Almighty. For this purpose, Hazrat Adam was guided by Allah to go to an empty valley, which is now the present day city of Mecca, and to build the house and the house which he built was none other than the Holy Kaaba, the house of God where millions of Muslims visit to perform Hajj annually. Hazrat Adam al -Islam too would come to, back to this house of God to perform pilgrimage in his lifetime all the way from India. So he would come back and then go back. All Allah the Almighty had told him, meaning Hazrat Adam, and his followers the ways to worship Allah and to make sacrifices for the sake of Allah the Almighty. Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa were then blessed with two sons, Habil and Kabil. One day the two brothers got into a fight. Kabil, in a fit of anger, hit his brother in such a way that he ended up killing his brother. Right away, Kabil realized that he had committed a crime. And he would be punished for it. Remember, Allah Ta'ala had given a law to Hazrat Adam Alayhi Salam. And this law also dictated that anyone that commits a crime would be punished. And he realized, Kabil realized that he took away the life of an individual who also happened to be the son of a prophet and the brother to Kabil. So, realizing that he will be punished for it, Strong feelings of sadness and regret overcame him. He did not know what to do with the dead body of his brother until he saw a crow who was burying a dead crow nearby. Kabi learned from this and also decided to bury his brother in the ground. Soon afterwards, he ran away. History tells us that eventually he found a woman from a different tribe in a distant land whom he ended up marrying. Remember, Hazrat Adam was not the first human being. There were other humans that existed even before Hazrat Adam. And it was a woman from among the children of those people whom Kabil eventually married. When Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa found out that Kabil had killed Habil, they naturally became very sad upon losing their son. But soon Allah Almighty blessed them with another son whom they named Sheath. Sheath alayhi salam later on became a prophet in his own right. Hazrat Shis alayhi salam grew up to become a righteous servant of Allah and was later appointed as a prophet of God, just like his father, Hazrat Adam. One could say that Hazrat Shis was the Khalifa of Hazrat Adam. After living a long and fruitful life, Hazrat Adam and his wife, Hazrat Hawa, both <coughs> passed away. They were buried by Hazrat Shis alayhi salam, who then became the leader of the community of believers that Hazrat Adam left behind. So he became the Khalifa of the Jamaat of Mumineen at that time. 
This was the story of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah Almighty. But it would be incomplete if I do not mention that Hazrat Adam had warned his people against the coming of Dajjal, a group of people who would try to misguide humanity and enslave it. We should remember that the stories of the prophets that are mentioned in the Quran are not just stories of the past, but they also serve as prophecies that will come true at a later point in time. The way that Hazrat Adam ultimately defeated Shaitan, similarly, it was also prophesied that one final battle would take place between Shaitan and someone who would be called the second Adam. This second Adam was to come 6,000 years after the first Adam. At the time of our beloved Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 4,739 years had already passed since the time of Hazrat Adam Alayhi Salam, the first Prophet of God. Therefore, around 1890s, the coming of the second Adam was expected. Did you know that in 1889, the promised Messiah, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian, laid the foundation of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community and was called the second Adam by Allah Himself. The promised Messiah has mentioned that every 7,000 years, humanity goes through a cycle of destruction. A major disaster strikes that wipes out major sections of humanity on the earth and only a handful of people survive in different parts of the world. From among those who survive, Allah Almighty once again chooses a person who becomes the leader of the new civilization. And this leader, this person, is given the title of Adam. You see, Adam is actually a title that is given to the individual who would lead the new civilization. The Hazrat Adam salam, who is mentioned in our Holy Quran is the one who appeared in the beginning of our 7,000 year cycle, more than 6,100 years ago. Many thousands of Adams have already come and gone. And only Allah the Almighty knows best as to how many more Adams will come in future. Muhammadur Rasulullah <laughs>